Kevin McCarthy out as Speaker of the House. Our next guest says former President Donald Trump cast a long shadow over the former Speaker's downfall. Joining us right now, Mike Allen is the co-founder of Axios. I don't know if you heard, we had a little debate, let's call it, at the top of the hour about this very issue, the connection between, uh, frankly, Matt Gates and Donald Trump and the Speaker. You, you think this is all a Trump story, ultimately, underneath it? Well, there's certainly a Trump story behind it, uh, Andrew, and that leeriness, queasiness in the markets that we saw at the top of the show is 100x on Capitol Hill. Republicans are afraid, both for the future of the party and for the future of the majority. And how Trump shadows this is how he does so many things. Like, he helped make Kevin McCarthy speaker. Kevin McCarthy would not be speaker without Trump. But then, once he got into the job and had to govern, had to do the job, a lot of the MAGA members, the most fervent Trump supporters, were disappointed. And then, in the end, surprise, being a friend of Donald Trump, he didn't save him, couldn't save him, wouldn't save him. And so that's where he went down. So what happens next? Who do you think becomes uh, the speaker? And what does this all say about the possibility or not of a government shutdown later this fall? Yeah, we're going to be uh, back the week before Thanksgiving. I uh, see very little chance that this is going to be uh, solved ahead of time. Andrew, I can tell you, the business community, among others, totally taken by surprise by what happened yesterday. K Street, the lobbyists were very invested over many years in Kevin McCarthy. And even though we could see this coming, even though this seemed like the way the play would end, nobody really, uh, no one in the business community that I talked to really thought it would happen this fast. And so there's not a plan B. Okay, you killed the king, but who comes next? Uh, the way the one uh, top member of the business community put it to me is there's no plan B. It's more like plans B through Q. That is no plan, a buffet. But, Andrew, I can tell you, based on my conversations with Capitol Hill, two most likely leaders. As we head into that leadership election expected next week, the two who are the front now, first, Steve Scalise, uh, Steve Scalise of Louisiana, who's, of course, the number two member of the House. Andrew, if, if he really makes a push for this, it would be very hard for House Republicans to deny him. As one member uh, put it to me, he sacrificed a lot for the country in the conference, of course. As your viewers know, uh, he was badly wounded in that shooting years ago with the Republican uh, baseball practice. And this summer, he was diagnosed with uh, blood cancer. But members say to me, but is he really right for the rigors of this job? The job is traveling the country. Uh, the second, uh, most likely, Jim Jordan of Ohio. Again, someone that your uh, viewers know, uh, chairman of the Judiciary Committee. Why Jim Jordan? And why did I hear so many people last night saying to me, I can see it. And that's as far as we're going to go uh, in these crazy times. One, he was the first chairman of the Hardline Freedom Caucus. So his brand is the hard right conservatism. But he had ties to the establishment. He was a McCarthy team player. This is very important because most Republicans were still with Kevin McCarthy. It was the minority, of course, that booted him. But question about Jim Jordan. He is a firebrand. Could he adapt to the rigors of governing? You have to make tough decisions. That's not his brand. Mike, would you at least concede that, I mean, I remember, you know, Tip O'Neill and, and Reagan, so the two parties are, you know, it was a continuum about like that. We're somewhere, my, the camera can't go wide enough to show where we are. And, and it's on both sides. We got the squad and people who pull fire alarms and know exactly what they're doing on way out here and then sort of center Democrat. And then you've got McCarthy, who, who Hakeem Jeffries said really was a, extreme MAGA, but not extreme MAGA enough to keep his job, because the, the actual extreme MAGA are another, I mean, probably exponentially, like an earthquake, like a, between a five and a six, it's 10 times more yes. powerful. I mean, the, the extreme MAGA faction, and I didn't know, where'd Nancy Mace, what, what happened to her? Where did that come from? Um, it, it was a, it was an, a, a strange group of eight, those eight, was it not? And, and they can hide behind the, uh, the, the 33 trillion. That's all we hear about when Republicans couldn't really stop that and probably did aid it. 
And obviously, everybody spends. But how can you stop it when you don't control to, uh, the presidency or the Senate? Uh, Joe, you're pointing to something very important, and we'll talk about both the mega trend and the particular. The mega trend that you're talking about, that spectrum that extends uh, beyond uh, the TV screen, this is something that's really changed in the time that I have been covering Capitol Hill, covering ca uh, politics. And that is that, Joe, when you and I started, uh, people liked to argue, they liked to engage, they liked to fight the other side. Now, they don't even want to hear it. They don't even want to talk to the other side. That's the mega trend. You see it on Capitol Hill, you see it everywhere you travel in the country, including Charlotte, uh, North Carolina, where I am uh, this morning. The particular, you're exactly right that, that, that you, this uh, episode shows you can't get anything done. Because if you'd asked me a week ago, even less than that, I would have bet the Democrats would have saved Kevin McCarthy. Right. The uh, House Minority Leader, Hawking Jefferson. That's never going to happen. We, we understand uh, that, though. That, it, 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 it's not, that, the, the Republicans would never save Nancy Pelosi. It's just, that's when I say fish got to swim, birds, or I actually yeah, say fish got to fly, birds got to swim. People often act in their own interest. They assume that uh, whoever came uh, next would be worse from their perspective. But after what happened this weekend, the increased lack of distrust, no movement to do that, no gesture toward that whatsoever. Why well, he, he kept the government open? Sacrifice himself. Did not increase uh, trust between the Democratic because of leader Ukraine or something. And the I, yeah, I don't know. And, and the Biden impeached uh, the, the inquiry. They don't like. It. Right. So, so, Joe, something interesting about the, the impeachment inquiry, I think that uh, Democrats wanted to get something from Speaker McCarthy if they were going to uh, save him. Yeah. One thing they floated was shutting down the impeachment inquiry. And he was like, A, no, I'm not going to do that. My brand is that I'm a fighter. But B, uh, he would never have been able to keep his job if he did that. Right. Uh, he would not be Speaker for long.